Madeley with Kiss, Kindness is Sexy. And today I'm here with Coach Dax Jordan and we're talking about this incredible initiative that you started way back when COVID started. Yep. And it was something that I got involved with with a friend of mine mm -hmm. and I couldn't attend too many because I was suffering from a concussion. Yep. But yep, the nice thing was, was during this event, you actually modified pieces to help me. Of course. And that really helped me um, keep my motivation going. Mm -hmm. It helped me make it through this whole pandemic, through all of the lockdowns yeah. that we've gone through. So I'd really like it, if you don't mind, to tell me a little bit about what you started, yeah. why you started it, mm -hmm. and um, is it still going? Um, so having been involved in fitness as long as I have, um, like my first job in the fitness industry was in 2001. So it's been years. And truthfully, I think this and my boot camps and all of that, having worked in an industry setting for so long, um, it just made sense, especially with the lockdowns and everything being closed, that I branched out and started to do something, you know, that could touch the public. Yeah. Um, I work out, you know, regularly. Can't tell. Yeah, you cannot yeah, tell yeah, at, at all. all. I work out pretty regularly. And um, a Saturday workout was something that I was going to be doing anyway. So I just decided to open it up. So what I did was started a boot camp. Um, we had anywhere from 5 to 25, 30 people showing up on a Saturday morning. Um, and you know, we just run and do all sorts of exercise and it just, it was really good for me because it kept me in touch with the public as opposed to just being locked down and not being able to see anybody. Um, and yeah, I got my own workouts in. So it was kind of a mutual benefit. And the best part about this was the entire thing was absolutely free to anyone, yeah. anyone who wanted to come out. Yeah. You just showed up at the park. Yeah. Um, you literally, they were literally running. So there were all different kinds of exercises. Um, you did kind of yoga moves, things, yeah. Yeah. Thing, things that I couldn't do at the time, yeah, yeah, yeah. but modifying it, there were of ways course. to modify that made it great. Yeah. The yeah. other thing that you did that was huge for me um, was you started a challenge and mm -hmm. it yep. was technically a, t a fitness challenge, but for me, it ended up being a mental challenge because yeah. there was a group of us absolutely free yet again. Yeah. And this group of us just connected with each other. Um, we encouraged each other. Yeah. And even though I had those struggles because of the concussion, I still would put in what I was doing and people were still so encouraging that it pushed me a little bit farther yeah, sure. each time. Sure. Can you tell me a little bit about that challenge and why you started that particular one? So the one? challenge was kind of an extension of the boot camp. Um, having again done what I've done over my career, I will tell you this much. Everybody knows exercise is good for them. Everybody. Yes. There's not a single Absolutely. person on this planet that isn't aware that working out is good for you. That's right. However, only 3% of the Canadian population works out on a regular basis. That's true. So there's a gap. There's a gap between the knowledge, and I'd say that everybody would like to be in shape. Yeah. There's not a person out there that enjoys being out of shape. I think everybody you know, likes that idea, but still they don't work out. So I found that in motivating someone to take the steps physically that they need to, to get to their ultimate goals, the only way you're gonna do that is if you break the mental barriers that are in their way. Absolutely. For example, one thing that I hear more than ever, no one's willing to get out of bed. That was Nobody's me. willing to get out of bed, nobody. I was nobody, totally nobody, not. Nobody, nobody, So part of the challenge was to get up earlier than you normally would, whatever that time was. So if you're normally waking up at eight, wake up at 7.30. No, uh, no, 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 no. I normally get up at eight and he got me up at 5 well, a.m. Um, and the idea is to conquer something at the beginning of the day, right? To beat yourself, so to speak, right? Because ultimately what ends up happening is again, we know we need to work out, but there's that voice that says later, don't worry about it. My knee is hurting, my back is hurting. And all of these excuses stop you. If you defeat an excuse first thing in the morning, and you go through the aspects of the challenge that we put forth. There was some exercise in there, yeah. meditative stuff, some journaling in there. Actually, um, that, I got to say, the journaling was incredible. Yeah, sure. That part made you go, like, deep inside yeah. yourself. Yeah. That was that I was think one, really of, one of my, my favorite journaling um, topics was name the 50 people who have had a lasting influence, whether positive or negative, on you. 
Um, that was really I went cool. back to childhood <laughs> and things that I remember happening that were great and things that I remember happening that maybe made me the bad kid that I was for the time. What? Um, yeah, right? So So um, why did I do it? I think it was more of a challenge to myself to see if I could put together a 21-day program and come up with novel ideas, to come up with original workout programs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and yeah, I mean, Mary had lasting, lasting results. So um, for me as a trainer, I'll tell you this much. It's like, think of a carpenter. When a carpenter builds something, at the end of the job, he can look at what he's done and says, here is my work. <laughs> there is a feeling of satisfaction that comes from that, right? And we as coaches and we as trainers, we want to get our clients to that spot. So someone comes and says, I've got this goal. I want to lose weight. I want to look better. I want to feel better about myself. I want to be strong, whatever it might be. When we accomplish that goal, I can say, look what we did. I have clients that have come see me, 275 pounds, and can barely get out of a chair, and a year and a half later, weigh 160 pounds, and can squat their body weight up and down. That's incredible. So seeing that sort of a change for me is the aha, yes, I've done it moment. <laughs> That's the real payoff. Yep. So most you know. people just exist. You know, they live. They go to work, they do the job, they make the money, they come home, they put the food in the fridge, they eat, and they go back and they do it again. When you can take a moment to really explore, like, why when I get cut off in traffic, do I have this visceral response? Why, it, like, really, why, like, why am I out of control in that moment, right? Or, you know, why when I go into a room with a bunch of people, do I feel like I need to make myself small? Like, what is that? Where is that coming from? Right? I never have that problem. Yeah, no, <laughs> me neither. But there are people yes. who would express that. The Absolutely. fear of public speaking, you know, stuff of that sort, right? I started on a journey of self-improvement, more than just physical, because when you're young, working out and being in shape, it's all about just being strong and good looking. But then as life goes on, you get thrown a couple curveballs here and there, and you realize that your wit, charm, and your good looks don't necessarily solve all problems. So what I started doing is start to solve the problems in advance. Why do I feel this way? Why does this happen? Why do I have anger towards this person? Where is that coming from? And I think that I found that I could become a better version of myself more than just, again, lifting more or running faster. Um, like, I want to sleep better at night. I want to have a better relationship with my friends. I want to, you know, build a better business. I want to... Um, you know, travel more and see the, and all of those sort of things. What are the aspects of me? Because I'm the only thing that I can really change. change. I can't change anything outside of myself, really. That's but right. if I change myself, then I can affect change on the world. And I think that going on that journey, just really for myself, made me want to share it with others. I, actually, I really appreciate you going through that because yeah. for me, my sure. honest first thought was, I don't have time for this. Yeah. I'm dealing with a concussion. Sure. I'm starting a full-time yeah. job. And it was a challenging job. Of course. And I thought, I just it's not going to happen. Yeah. And then, you know what, I'm just going to make that first step and just say, okay, I'm going to take the first yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just the way you handled everything, just the way you put it all together, it just stuck with me. It really helped you. And it's pushed me to get back into my KISS vlogs. Yeah. So I've been off for so long because yeah. of the concussion. And I thought, that's it. I'm just now... Um, take, I went back through the journals that we did in sure. those 21 days yep. and I started thinking there's so many things that I need to change about me and one of them yeah. is I need to get back to the thing that makes me happiest yeah. and helping people makes me yeah, happiest. Of course. So of course. what you did was incredible for me. At the end of the day, if, if I get, let's look at it in the inverse, right? If you commit to a, a, a training plan or a program or what have you and the alarm goes off and it's time to go do the thing. And your thoughts like, nah, you know what, I'll do it later. That gets stronger, right? We are constantly learning even from our own behavior, right? And if you reinforce the lying in bed and not getting up, That's guess right. what? It's going to be harder the next day and the next day and the next day and the next day. Negativity pulls negativity. Exactly. So you know, doing the opposite and just getting out of bed That's one of and the best that things. feeling of accomplishment breeds more accomplishment. Exactly. Let me tell you, you got aches and pains right now. If you're not doing anything about them, they're not going to get better. Exactly. Fast forward to 50, 60, and 70, and you'll be dealing with those aches and pains in a much more increased uh, fashion. You know what I mean? So for me, it's all about just like I've seen people get old. I've seen people walk into the gym with the knee like this and the back like this. And I know that if that person started working out 30 years earlier, they wouldn't be like that. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. I'll tell you this. I uh, once interviewed a nurse. She'd been an RN for 35 years. And I asked her, you know, obviously you've been in the hospitals, you know, for decades. At this point, it was almost as long as I've been alive. Um, and I said to her, if you looked at every single person that you've seen, every condition, every issue, every whatever, every person you've come across in your practice, how many of their issues could be attributed to lack of fitness and exercise? 90%. I totally believe that. Right? Put it down to someone who's fit, strong, and healthy gets in a car accident versus someone who's weak, bad bones, you know, arthritic, bad, bad same yeah. car accident. Who's going to come out better? Yeah. You know what I mean? Same people fall down a flight of stairs. Who's going to come out better? You know, talk about type 2 diabetes being 90% preventable. Talking about heart disease being the number one killer in all of all of the world, basically. I mean, we are facing an epidemic of unfit. I've, you know, had opportunities, for example, when I hurt my shoulder or when I broke my hand, where I stopped, stopped running, stopped lifting, stopped exercising, started eating crappy food, where I let myself go. And that's usually what happens when you do stop exercising. That's when you fall to eating the stuff that sure. you shouldn't be yeah, eating. Because yeah, if you still yeah, continue, yeah. you may not exercise, but if you continue to eat properly, it would be yeah. not as bad. Well, I'll say this much. I've never, ever, long-term, known someone to stick to a diet, yeah. like an alternative way of eating, yeah. long-term without exercise. Never, not once. What I'm saying is I've, I've fallen off. And I've seen my body deteriorate and gained weight and felt like, I don't know, it's just not acceptable for me. For me, my health is my wealth. Obviously, I'm in the business. Yeah. It's, it's good that I can, you know, practice what I preach. Ultimately, it's like, it's like money. Like, if I told you every morning at 5 a.m. you get out of bed and you have a workout and you stretch and you do all that stuff that's good for you and I'm going to give you a thousand bucks, I guarantee you'd get up. I'd be all over You know what I mean? So, is that you what gotta, you Yeah, right. <laughs> you got to ask yourself if money is worth more than your body. I have a question then. For someone who is sitting here watching and thinking, I can't really get myself started, what would you suggest? Well, you can what follow me on, on Instagram, Coach Dax Jordan. Um, I'll put that in the right? tag. Message right? me if you have questions, no problem. But for somebody who's looking to get off the couch, like completely stand still into getting started towards their own fitness, I would say start with walks. You know, yes. just get a good pair of sneakers, you know, a good pair of shoes. Um, you may want to, yeah, yeah. I walk with podcasts and talk. I know I you keep sending those and yeah, they're phenomenal. Yeah, I love yeah. those things. I find talks a little bit more engaging during a walk. When oh. I work out, I listen to music, but when I'm walking or going for a jog, I like to hear ideas that stimulate my mind. I was the opposite because what I did was I took in, during the walk, sure. I actually did music okay. because it's the thing that gets me going. I yeah, walk yeah, yeah. faster yeah, yeah. and I walk longer. Yeah, that's the different. thing. It's finding a person, a thing like I could give you recommendations, but whatever works for you yeah. that you can sustain long term is probably the best. Here's yeah. the thing. We could talk program design, rep ranges. We can talk weight. We could talk diet, nutrition, the whole nine yards. Nothing matters without consistency. So here's the deal. If you're going to start working out, don't stop. If you want to start and you want someone to encourage you, get a yeah, hold of Coach yeah. Dad. So back to your earlier question. I would say, you know, personally, if I had to make a recommendation for someone I did not know, I would say go on YouTube, look up beginner yoga, uh, maybe do a half an hour after a half an hour walk, maybe three times a week, see how that feels. Uh, maybe do 45 minutes and a 45 minute walk, maybe do an hour and an hour and try to progress in that way. Um, and then you're going to want to start doing some weight training. It's never a bad idea to invest in some fitness equipment. I will say this much. If you do so, you need a room for it. Um, trying to just like shove, you know, your fitness equipment yeah. into the living room. It never works. Under the couch. It, ne it never works. But having a gym area with a door or a curtain or somewhere where you specifically go to work out uh, in your own home, whether even just a yoga mat, you know, and some soft equipment, is always a good idea. I mean, there's exercise that's good for everybody. And for some people, it might just be standing up out of a chair 10 times, as an example. You know, something as simple as foot movements help to strengthen the ankle joint. I mean, there's any number of, of, of there's thousands of exercises. And if we take it all the way back to a rehab mentality and then build upon that strength, it may take years. It may take a decade. But, you know, cultivating strength and maintaining it is probably the number one um, the number one goal that everybody should have. I mean, it's all about being able to engage in life, really. You know, and I agree. You know, absolutely. like I think people think I work out because I want to look good. This is just a, a side benefit. Um, I want to be able to do stuff. 
I'm a very adventurous kind of guy and that leads my 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 thought process you know I don't want to feel like I can't climb stairs I don't yeah. want to feel like I'm going to throw my back out if I pick a box up I don't want to feel defeated by life's events and I want to be able to do stuff so. well even as simple as my husband and I ride sport bikes yeah so yeah exactly there's a difference between how your body feels after riding yeah, for sure. three hours yeah sure and it's your back yeah, this, this, ev- everything hips, 100%. Back. Oh my. Oh, yeah, even your yeah. knees because yeah. of the position you're in yeah, and your knees are up on a sport yeah. bike so yeah. we want to be able to do that for yeah. a long time forever and if forever, you don't forever, exactly. forever. Like, like till you're in your death then. i'm good to forever. be yeah. well i have family who live to be 105 yeah. for me i really do want to be able yeah. to keep doing this yeah. you're not moving your blood is going to start to slow down you're going to have poor uh, circulation yeah. to areas of your body you know diabetics have been known to lose limbs to blood flow Absolutely. i mean you got to move man you got to move just, just moving just getting walking. your getting your heart rate elevated okay you know getting your heart rate elevated um it's also important that you know you try to do different stuff like you know swimming, like biking. cardio swimming and cardio riding a bike are different yes like you could be great um, at riding a bike and i put you in the pool and you're not so good anymore, Absolutely. right? Because blood flow is going to different areas, and those areas also need to be developed. Right. It's also more challenging in certain ways, right? Better, better, better. And it uses all different muscles. Exactly, so 100%. And you know, it's, isn't it great to do things? Like, isn't it great to go water skiing? Isn't it great to go and rock climbing? Isn't it great to go kayaking? Isn't it awesome to dance? Isn't it awesome to, to go for a run? Like, but what are you going to do? Just sit in your chair and watch the prices, right? Like... Or, really? Like well, and nowadays you know I, mean? I see people just sitting on their deck and doing absolutely nothing. nothing. I don't know. It's okay. nice to to be with friends yeah, and to sure. sit and talk, but you still got to get no, but out. No, that's why I get up and I get my workout out of the way first thing in the morning. Yeah, Done. that's true. That's so true. now I can sit on the deck. <laughs> you see me want. sitting on the deck with you sitting on the deck. You think you done it? I've already had a a forty five minute run and a forty five minute workout. I'm good. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm good. So don't you worry about me. <laughs> you don't know how I keep this face because I was up hours before you. you know? <laughs> yes, he was yeah, messaging and us and telling us yeah. over and over again. And you Get know, again, out of bed. it's just because I know the difference. I've always said explaining the difference of true physical fitness to a person who does not engage in it is like trying to explain color to a blind person. So something that could get people just, you know, get them motivated maybe mm-hmm. just a little bit. Sure. I know for me, like I said, there were certain moves I couldn't do. And then you were like, well, just try this and this. And I thought, mm-hmm. how does that work? But it did. Well, the, the, we have what are known as the, the, the primal or primary movements. So squatting, <laughs> lunging, pushing, pulling, bending, and twisting or rotating. Gait, the way you walk, is also one of them. So, you, Oh, wait. What's the way you walk? It's called your gait. Okay, what's, what's the issue with the gait? Well, some people pronate, meaning their feet collapse in towards... Uh, Mine, towards I, the middle. Mine go out. Some people supinate. That's mine. I'm which a rotates, supinator. Which rotates the knees out, affects the hip, the back, rotating in, affects the knees, the back. You're like a building collapsing, okay. right? So I buy shoes you know, that, that are supposed to push the knees. Are supposed to help. Yeah. So you're going to want to do foot strength in the exercise. I think every human being needs to do foot strength in the exercise. I work out in barefoot as much as possible. Um, I didn't know that was a good thing. Oh, it's I love best. working out. Yeah, you got to work out barefoot. Oh, 100%. I love it. Okay, great. Um, especially when you're doing squatting, um, deadlifting type exercise, but pretty much as much as you can. It's Think of it this way. If you are reaching into your pocket for a coin, right? And you're wearing a glove. Can you feel what's happening in there? Nope. Or you got to take the glove off? Got to take the glove off. So it's the same thing when you're walking around in shoes. You feel like you can feel what's happening, but you, your brain is getting very muted signals. So if you take your, your shoes off and walk on the ground, your brain and your proprioceptors, which are the... The, the, the nerve systems that know where your positions are right. immediately start to fire. Okay. And this wakes up your kinetic chain. So ankle, knee, hip, lower back, shoulders, elbows, and all the way up. So, yeah, working out barefoot, running barefoot. I if you wish. can, find grass and go running barefoot. Really, really good for your feet. Really. <laughs> Another thing is, is getting rid of those crappy shoes. If you're wearing yes. the Skechers that are like bouncy and des- they don't help. Right. They throw you out of your natural alignment. They have way less of an effect. Then you'd think they can actually do more, a lot more harm than good. Absolutely. Um, if you're going to do running, a pair of Asics, Ciccones, Sauconies, uh, something along those lines. Are just they for in, running. Are there inexpensive ones for people who just don't have the money? To find them. I, I get my Asics typically around half price just by looking around online and finding them on sales. Okay. Um, I, I think you should buy expensive shoes. Okay. I, I just think it's a good investment. You know, getting a good pair of shoes that are going to align your feet effectively for running type exercise. Okay. 
However, if you're going to be squatting and lunging, if you're going to be doing exercise with that, like I said, try to do it there. Yeah, looking at those primal movements, um, squatting, lunging. Did, wait a second. You had done a, a, a little trick with us. With, yeah. a, with a block. Remember that Elevating day? your heels. So most people have restricted ankle mobility. Yeah. So meaning this joint literally doesn't move much further than that. Okay. Right? So what happens when we squat is we try to push our knees forward and we go up onto our toes or the feet collapse. Okay. Towards the center. By elevating the heels, we artificially increase that range of motion. Allow, like if you were to go right down. You would lift your heels up off the ground, would you? I don't know if I could do all right, right? now. Okay. No, no, it's far, right? And you can feel your heels want to come up off the ground. Yeah, I would right? rather have my heels So by there. elevating the heels, there's something to come up from. So it's just a trick. And you just put a block down like it was just like a piece of wood. Yeah, like a, an inch and a half, two inch piece of wood, something along those lines. It's an acceptable cheat. Yeah, yeah, Someone yeah. should do a squat that can't, that I don't want to go all the so way So you would start, just go do with an acceptable range of motion. So, so and from then here, you wait, wait. Okay. So what you want to do, okay, is put your hands forward. It's going to help with the balance and help with the back strength. I want you to push your knees forward and open and stick your butt out like you you're mean? sitting into a chair. Put your knees forward and open. <laughs> yeah, and that's it. And come up. Push down and squeeze your butt. Good. Go again. Good. Where are you looking now? Look straight ahead. Good. And you're squatting. Look at that. And you're squatting. <laughs> you see this in the in the exercise classes quite a bit. Squat. Squat. This is not yeah, a squat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a squat. I right? was taught that you literally try to sit on a chair, like you said, sit on as if yes, you're sitting on a chair. But the way to lead it is my knees need to get out of the way. Okay. So I'm going to push my knees forward and drop my butt down. Okay. And that's basically it. Okay. Now a proper lunge because I mm -hmm. struggle with lunges. Lunges are really tricky because there's a balance aspect. We've got, again, one hip's tighter than the other, uh, quadricep tighter than the other, hip flexor. So lunges are a little tricky. Um, at the end of the day, I'll give you the quick two, two uh, biggest mistakes people make. Um, most people cross the midline, right? So if you see, when I stand, if I were to stand, I would stand like this. So when I lunge, that distance between my feet should be maintained. If I do this, I'm tightrope walking, so I'm so immediately you are unstable. you supposed to have one out. Yes, they're supposed to remain a distance. So if I'm doing a walking lunge, actually I guess I'll walk towards the camera, yeah. the distance between my feet remains, right? And that's gonna be like, I'm much more stable here than here. So when I lunge, I wanna maintain that distance. So maintaining that distance between your feet is very paramount for stability and balance. What I typically do when I train someone is whether I have a line on the floor or a, a broom handle, something to show them to maintain the distance on either side of. Um, secondly is the knees collapsing. It's very common that we push ourselves forward into our toes, both when we squat and when we lunge, and due to weakness in the feet, we go into our toe, the foot collapses in and the knee drops in. I'm not stable with my knees both pointing towards the middle. If I open them up, immediately I have more stability. So make sure that your forward foot is planted, that your heel is base down on the ground, and when I push, I wanna push the whole foot into the floor. And that's gonna help tremendously. The, the whole foot. foot your entire foot, so a tripod. The spots behind your big toe, little toe, and your heel are all driving firmly into the foot. On, on just the- On the, the forward foot. Okay. The forward. Pushing would be a push up, and- Now, if you have issues like mine with the, when I tore the rotator cuff, um, I So do... there's a lot to do. So, listen, almost everybody's torn their rotator cuff. It's extremely yeah. common. Um, doing the exercises that help to get the rotator and shoulder into the proper position, most people, or internally rotated, right. even somewhat elevated, meaning the upper trap is overactive, and uh, due to tightness in the pack and weakness in the back, the shoulder joint goes from here to here, right? This puts the head of the humerus in, uh, in an incorrect position and basically causes impingement in the rotator cuff muscle. It's extremely common. It's probably the most common injury. So there's this is a very, very long conversation, but there are tons of exercises help to depress and retract the scapula and strengthen it in that position. So what ends up happening is you're no longer moving through a position with your shoulder in, in an impinged position. Okay. We want to pull that shoulder blade down and back and move with the shoulder actually in the glenohumeral joint. Okay. So there's known as a trap three raise. Look it up. I'm sure you can find it where we basically open up the arms in a Y, pulling the shoulder blades down and back 
as our arms come up. Pulling, same idea, pull those shoulder blades together. Like every human being should be able to do a pull. Okay. Every human being should be able to do a pull. Every single one of us. You know, if you were six and you could do a pull-up, if you kept doing pull-ups at the time you are now, you'd still be doing pull-ups, no problem. See? Bending is hinging at the hips. So, you know, they say lift, don't lift with your back. Most people, when they go to pick something up, this happens. My back shouldn't be in that position. It's not strong. Okay. You should be strong in that position so you don't hurt yourself. But if you're going to be under load, you want to be able to maintain a nice flat back position before we pick something up. And this okay. is known as a hip, hip hinge or a bend. And then, of course, rotation, which is through the spine. So this is going to be core-oriented exercise where there's stability elsewhere and the core is able to rotate without so sacrificing that. Stability. You're almost staying in a standing in a lunge. That's one variety. A twist can be anything. Can you still do it? Like, you can okay. twist on your back. You can twist in a squat. You can twist okay. with overhead weight. You can do twists. There's any and rotational through the through the, the, the core or spine. And any of these things they can find it. Uh, they can find on YouTube, but they can sure. also connect with 100%. you. Hundred percent. And you're on Facebook, Instagram. Yeah, yep. Coach Dax George. I, yeah. I know you have a baby on the way, I do. and I am pretty darn sure that your lovely wife would like to have you back yeah, today. Yeah, 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 yeah. No worries. So, First of all, I really want to thank you for everything for everything you've done for me and helping yeah, me get back sure. to no life, problem. as no I call problem. it. Like I said, for me, the payback is seeing people get results and seeing people accomplish. Like, we just got to do it. You know what I mean? It's like it's like putting money in the bank. Like, it kind of sucks. You'd rather spend it on stuff. But over 10 years, when you see that amount grow, it's like, oh my gosh, I've made progress. Yeah. That's what it's like for me. And it honestly, I can promise you that if you did start, even if you just messaged Dax and yep. said, hey, what is it that I can do? How can I get started? And you actually start, I promise yeah, you, you will feel better like every freaking minute. 100%, 100%. It's phenomenal. Um, great for your inner self. It, it makes you feel so uh, happy. Like the well, happiness you, you and defeat, positivity. Defeat. Yeah, that's you right. Defeat, defeat. That's a great way to you know what I, I mean? like that yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's big. It's big. Like, like I said, that getting up in the morning, I think it's more about like getting up and slaying that dragon first thing in the morning. Take, yeah. Just take that one little, one little step. step. That's all it takes is one step one to get step. started. And Coach Dax is that step. Right. And I am so truly thankful for everything that you've Thank done. You. And no I no have pleasure. to say, as always, kindness is sexy. And sure seriously, is. you can't get sexier <laughs> than Coach Dax. <laughs> Take it easy. <laughs> Thanks so much. I really appreciate it. Sure. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a great day. Kindness is sexy. Kindness, kindness is sexy. Kindness. Yes.